down, down here in Melbourne. Getting the decision there against Josh Glenshaw. Six round stoppage. Julian Holland. And there you see Rain Mako, who was also a winner earlier tonight in a four rounder against Holly Fernley. Coming up with a TKO in the first round. Now two starts, two wins for Rain Mako, now based here in Melbourne. Born in New Zealand and obviously a very popular young boxer as well. Up next, though, our feature event. The Australian light heavyweight title is up for grabs. Adrian Bellin in against Paul Briggs in a state of origin battle here between Victoria and Queensland. Now, regular viewers on Fox Sports know all about Paul Briggs. He's been in great form of late. But Adrian Bellin, a former Australian cruiserweight champion, he won the title back in 97 over 12 rounds with Sam Solomon. So he has good credentials as well. The tail of the tape, though, does work to the advantage of Paul Briggs. He's going to be much bigger and just a little heavier as well, as you can see by the tail of the tape. Adrian Bellin, last in action in March, he stopped Jamie Meyer in the second round and had some four fights in 1999 as well. But given the form that we have seen here on Big Time Boxing for Paul Briggs, I would expect that, J uh, that Adrian Bellin is going to find this a very big ask. And certainly an early stoppage wouldn't be out of the question for Paul Briggs. He stopped Tosca Petridis and actually sent him into retirement in the first round back on October 6 on Big Time Boxing was over at 1 minute 49 of the first round after Petridis had been down twice. And before that, he was too good for Daniel Roussel, winning after Roussel had a cut above the left eye. And Paul Briggs, former kickboxing world champion, who saw his twin brother, Nathan, win a little earlier tonight as well with a second round stoppage of Mitch Ohalo. And Paul Briggs, well, when he left Queensland a couple of days ago, he was awaiting the arrival of his first child and he will enter the ring here fighting for the Australian Light Heavyweight Championship with his baby having arrived on the scene less than two hours ago. Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic thing to be getting in the ring, you know, like dedicate the, you know, the championship. If he wins the championship, dedicate it to his, to his, uh, he was a boy, wasn't he? Yeah, to his son. Fantastic. Congratulations to, uh, to his wife, Natasha, and uh, Paul Briggs, Briggs on the, on the, uh, safe arrival of their young fella terrific news yes and paul briggs is a very likable young man as well only 25 years of age having his eighth professional orthodox fight and going in for the australian title Josca petridis a former australian champion and daniel rossell now an australian champion both have been on the receiving end from paul briggs he's a very interesting Young man indeed, having worked overseas. And also fought Muay Thai in Thailand with great success. But you look at his seven previous opponents, and they are all highly credentialed. Moses Sarovi, former Australian champion. Jamie Wallace, the tough man from Adelaide, who had no answer for the body shots of Paul Briggs. He stopped yeah. him in three rounds. He is a tough man, ja Jamie Rousel. Jamie uh, Wallace too, and you know that's a, that's a big stoppage win. Because you know Jamie goes the distance with everybody. Well, they have a common opponent on their record, of course. Adrian Bellin fought Tosca Petridis for the Australian Cruiserweight title in April last year. Went four rounds. Petridis getting... I went the distance, that's right, yeah. No, he got stopped in the last round, didn't he? Yeah, with a TKO in round 12. There's a great, great performance by Adrian Bellin against Tosca Petridis at that stage. But Adrian Bellin, the 26-year-old, he too is a very likeable customer. Appearing in his 20th professional fight here, as opposed to Paul Briggs's eighth. So a big edge in experience there. And he too has seen action against former Australian champions, including Colin Wilson, Moses Sarovi, Phil Gregory, Peter Kinsella, Sam Solomon. And he fought Jamie Wallace back in May 96, losing over eight rounds. So the form line suggests that Paul Briggs is on the way up. Adrian Bell has been there. Another tremendous crowd in attendance. Congratulations to Peter Hunt and Murray Thompson from the Fighters Factory, who in conjunction with Craig and Bill Morty have put together a tremendous program to finish the season and our feature event is set to go and here is our ring announcer mr terry hansen ladies and gentlemen for the australian light heavyweight title set to be fought over 12 three-minute rounds in the red corner 
Fans of big time boxing will remember his first round KO of Tosca Petridis. World Kickboxing, the association world title holder from 56 kickboxing fights, 51 wins, 38 KOs. Chasing his first Australian boxing title with six wins, one loss, five KOs, Paul the Hurricane Ray! And in the blue corner, former Australian cruiserweight champion. First fight since March when he demolished Jamie Meyer in two rounds. 15 wins, three losses, one draw, 11 KOs. Adrian the Bomber Ben! Your referee for this fight, Jim Bowen. Judges Jim Slater, Gus Mercurio, and Dave Wignall. Oh, welcome to the centre 12 rounds of boxing, you know what we're here for? The Australian title. I've spoken to both of you boys in the dressing room, you know what I expect. Good, clean, hard fight, and obey my instructions at all times. Neutral corner, this one in, one behind me. Shake hands now, and start the last round. Let's get it on, boys. Good luck. Paul Briggs is ready to go. We just had Angelo Hyder, one of Australia's best trainers, walk past him. He puts the polish on the lights of Mark Vichero, the Australian champion. He said, don't blink. I presume don't he's blink. talking about Paul Briggs here and coming up with a short and quick victory against Adrian Bellum. We're underway for the Australian light heavyweight title. And Adrian Bellum will be in the black trunks and Paul Briggs is in the black with white piping. Yeah, I think it's right. Don't blink. Anything could happen in this first round. Both proven punches. It's a real make or break it fight the way I see it for Adrian Bellum. But uh, Paul Briggs at the moment certainly looking for money. Full credit to Adrian Bellin to take this fight because normally he's up around 45, 84 or 85 kilos. He's had to get down to 79 for the light heavyweight division and he's done that and he's taken on arguably the most improved boxer in Australia. He is a very hot prospect indeed, Paul Briggs. But Adrian Bellin sees this as a chance to become a dual Australian champion and there he is digging away to the body of Paul Briggs and serving it up to the bigger man here at the start of this scheduled 12 rounder certainly looked very confident when he got in the ring adrian bellin you know he's, he's not uh, not nervous at all he's he's you know opened, opened the first round very well here what about the kickboxing record of uh, paul briggs that's sensational as well as his professional record 50 51 wins in 56 kickboxing fights with 38 ko's in the mood in the mood muay thai style that's fantastic Adrian Bellum looks as though he's out of his weight division here. He's so much smaller than Paul Briggs. But there's only one pound between them in weight. Big edge in reach for Briggs. Almost three inches in the old language. But he just doesn't appear to be as smooth and comfortable as we've seen him in the past. Perhaps all the dramas concerning the birth of his first child that had a little effect on Paul Briggs. And it is a big step up for him in terms of he's now battling for an Australian title in just his eighth professional fight. Well, Adrian certainly comes to fight. Tonight's no, no difference. He's taking the fight straight up to Paul Briggs in the, in the opening round here, looking very confident. Also should pay credit to Glenn Kelly, who has relinquished the Australian light heavyweight title. What a tremendous champion he has been. Undefeated in 26 fights, 13 knockouts. Now taken Ivy of Pan Pacific honours and is closing in on a crack at Roy Jones Jr. A lot of people think that Glenn Kelly's out of his no, depth fighting Roy Jones Jr. Well, most people who have thought Roy Jones Jr. have been out of their depth. But Glenn Kelly, undefeated, yeah. he continues to knock down the people they put in front of him. He's desperate to get world recognition and we certainly wish him the best of luck now that he has relinquished the Australian title and will campaign almost exclusively overseas. Yeah, he's a very polished performer, Glenn Kelly, and I, you know, oh, he hurt, he hurt Paul Briggs there with a nice left hook. Good, good opening round for Bellin. And Bellin's cut above the right eye as well in that exchange. It's a nasty cut as well. They're going to have to have a look at that, but yes, certainly Paul Briggs just stunned there toward the end of round number one. Yeah, I don't think they've stopped it uh, adequately. It, they need to put some more adrenaline on it. It's still trickling down. Put the, put the Vaseline on a bit early, I think. Yep. 
Yeah, I'd, you'd have to give the first round 10-9 ten, ten, to Adrian Bellin. A very, very impressive uh, opening round. Even though he got the cut right on the bell, he uh, did land the better of the punches in that first round. Still spitting blood, Adrian Bellin as round number two gets underway. Adrian Bellin in the black trunks, Paul Briggs the taller of the two in the black with white piping. Bellin taking the opening round according to Barry Michael. I saw it likewise, 10-9. I'm a little concerned for that cut around the right eye of Adrian Bellin, though. It's in a nasty position. But at the moment, Paul Briggs is oh, just not looking comfortable and getting backed up here by Adrian Bellin. Right! Don't punch! Don't punch! Don't punch! Right! Hey! I have not yet done punch, okay? Okay. Jimmy Bowen, the referee, certainly letting the boys know what he means. And we're going to see if Paul Briggs can fight on the retreat here because we haven't had to see him retreat too often in the past, but Adrian Bellin marching forward at him. Wants to get in close and negate the reach and height advantage that Paul Briggs enjoys. Big body shot from Briggs. Now he's starting to warm to the task. I notice uh, Briggs switches both feet easily, very comfortably. He can turn south forward, you know, puts his right foot forward. His balance is very good. Yes, he is the complete package. There's a lot to like about him. Good exchange of solid shots there. Break! Break! Oh, that's one of the eight. Mm. I, I can't tell you a break, okay? Right, okay. That's one of the eight. That eye is starting to look very untidy now for Adrian Bell, and I wouldn't be surprised if Jeff Bowlen calls the doctor in here. You can yeah. see his face is splattered with blood. To his credit, he keeps coming forward, although Briggs just picking him off with a jab and hitting the target area as well with that cut has opened up on the eyebrow. Good body shot there from Briggs. Right, that one. Right back, right back, right back. That's it. Well, I'm walking up non-stop. As soon as they break, he's straight back in there like a bull terrier. Yes, there are similarities between Adrian Bellin and Mike Tyson in their style. And Bellin has really gone to school in the Tyson style. Put your hands up high and keep walking forward to the storm. And Briggs caught him with a right hand on that occasion. May even be a second cut under the right eye now of Adrian Bellin. Certainly the one over the top is getting very untidy. And he's now starting to squint and blink his eye because his vision is starting to be impaired. The doctor will be across there between rounds, if not beforehand, to get a look at the eye of Adrian Bellin. Paul Briggs has started to settle into his game plan now. He's boxing better, but I, I still think, you know, Adrian sort of had the better of the round. Oh. Big power Hello. shots being landed Good in the shot. body by Paul Briggs. Yeah. I shall call it even that round. Briggs came back well, well towards the end. I'm going to call it an even round. Bellin made, made the fight, walked up all the time, but Briggs did land a lot of good clean shots. Very determined Adrian Berlin in the corner there. I want you to start trying a bit more, man. You feel like you want to try some more, or you're you still working on something there? I'm just, yeah, I'm just right, I'm picking, I'm trying to pick my shots, so like slipping, yeah, get a little kick in or something. Wouldn't mind a couple of nice little combinations, and then catch them in the middle. You I'm know. being cautious, so you know, yeah, I don't okay. want to fucking. Okay. Well, not yet then. If you're not comfortable with it yet, don't do it yet. But remember, you've got to snap out of it later on, okay? Seconds out. Round three. Well, he appears to be composed at the moment, Adrian Bellin. Very confident in the corner. A light heavyweight championship of Australia up for grabs here. Paul Briggs in the black and white trunks. Adrian Bellin, former Australian cruiserweight champion in the all black, the shorter of the two. Barry Michael has it 2019 in favour of Adrian Bellin through two rounds. I have it 19 apiece, having given Paul Briggs the previous round 10-9. I expect that he's going to get even better. The longer the fight goes, he just appeared to be a little uncomfortable. Now he's switching to a southpaw stance momentarily, does Paul Briggs. And some blood high on his forehead as well. He's a good body puncher too, Paul Briggs. He, he mixes them up underneath very well. Oh. The inside of his legs as well. Paul Briggs shows the scars of a kickboxing career. As he backs up Bell on there, the uppercut. Lovely uppercut. Bellin took that punch really well. That was a ripper of an uppercut. Bellin's now bleeding from the nose as well and freely. He's starting to look very sick and sorry for himself. Now 
Briggs is showing us some of his skills. Just picking off Adrian Bellin and making full use of that reach advantage. You have to like the tenacity of Adrian Bellin. You do. He hasn't taken a backward step yet. He's getting picked off more and more as this fight progresses, though. Briggs up, bouncing on the toes. And certainly the accurate, the cleaner, the heavier hitting is coming from Paul Briggs. Extremely fit as well. The fact that Adrian Bellin hasn't seen a lot of ring action in the last 12 months is a concern. Yeah, ring activity. There's nothing like ring activity. You can work as hard as you like on the road or in the gym, but uh, you've got to have those that ring activity. Beautiful body shot there from Briggs. Growing in confidence is Paul Briggs, looking to emulate the feet of his twin brother Nathan, who's already won on this card here tonight. Oh. Wicked uppercut from Paul Briggs. And now he's starting to have his way with Adrian Bellin here in round number three. Fantastic combination there. And Adrian Bellin just fires back, though. He took a couple of good shots well there. Most of the punches from Bellin now taken on the gloves by Paul Briggs. Jim Bowler now looking at the right eye of Adrian Bell. He's bleeding from the nose profusely, and he's still walking into big power shots here from Paul Briggs. He does see punches very well, Paul Briggs. He slipped them well. Big right cross coming in there from Paul Briggs during that flurry as well. And now he switches to Southpaw and feeds Bellin the left-hand jab. End Love of it. round number three, and that is all one-way yeah, traffic. Very big round for Paul Briggs. Well, they have some work to do in the blue corner to try and patch up Adrian Berlin bleeding from above the right eye since the opening round, bleeding from the nose since this round. And cleaned him up. Yeah, the eye's slowing down. But he's still pretty tight. Wants to work more, more combinations. Paul Fifield, the trainer with the instructions there for Adrian Bell, and here's some of the better action from round three, and there is a nice, stiff, sharp jab from Paul Briggs. Just picking him off as he comes in. The Australian light heavyweight title is up for grabs here. Paul Briggs comes out of the red corner, wearing black with white piping, and it is Adrian Bell in all black. First three rounds, we have Mike, Barry Michael has at a level at 29 apiece. I have 29-28 for Paul Briggs so far. And he's only getting stronger. Again, he digs away to the rib cage yeah. with a sickening thud. They've got to, they've got to take their toll, those body shots. Oh, no right. way that Adrian Bellin can take this punishment for 12 rounds. Paul Briggs. He is an awesome competitor. He really looks the full bit. He's composed. He's, you know, he's, he's, his hands are high. He defends well. He sees punches well. He's got power in both hands. And he also seems to take a good shot too, which is the most important thing, really. Well, he took a wicked shot from Bellin in the first round. He recovered from it. And now is dictating the tempo as Bellin lands with a jab, though. And still continues to stalk Paul Briggs. He is an awesome puncher. Paul Briggs digging away to the body again. Oh, nice little uppercut there. You sort of get the, the feeling now, John, that he's just biding his time, Paul Briggs, waiting for the opening, picking his shots when he needs to. We certainly have slowed Adrian Bellin down to a large degree here. Bellin continues to come forward, but without the authority we saw in the previous rounds, now quickly into a southpaw stance, Paul Briggs, now back to the orthodox. A light heavyweight, he is very good on his feet. Yeah, superb balance. In the close quarters, he gets the better of that exchange against Adrian Bellin as well. Final 60 seconds, round number five. Scheduled 12 rounder for the Australian light heavyweight crown, recently vacated by Glenn Kelly. And then you see the skills of Briggs feeding out left hand jab. Yeah, look at that. Sharp punching with a straight right, too. It's just a matter of time, I think. Adrian Bellin didn't flinch. No, he does he does take a good shot. He was stopped in the first round by Moses Saravi, but I think he was caught cold that time. That can happen to anyone. Uh, against Tosca Petridis, he, he was hit with a hell of a lot of bumps. Big right hand from Bellin. 
to Paul Briggs' jaw, but he, I don't think he was really hurt. Briggs just loading up, looking for a shot here. And that might work to his disadvantage as Bellin continues to work. The overhand right's a good advantage. Again, good defensive skills coming from Paul Briggs Very right at the end of round number four. And another round, 10-9 to Paul Briggs, quite comfortably. Generous round of applause from the fans here. Adrian Bellin really has his work cut out. He's smothered in blood at the moment. And this man here, Paul Briggs, well, is he on his way to the Australian title in just his eighth professional fight? Yeah, very extensive um, kickboxing career has certainly stood him in good stead. And he's, he's, he's switched over to the professional boxing ranks in really class style. Got a great future. You've got the rounds underneath your belt now. All right. Well, now you can do the distance. Let's just do it now. Really make him work for it, all right? Yep. There is Adrian Bellin. Former Australian cruiserweight champion. And then he has his work cut out here against Paul Briggs. I mentioned this is his eighth professional fight for Briggs. Shannon Taylor won the Australian Junior Walterweight title in just his third professional fight. Paul Briggs in the black and white, the taller of the two men. Adrian Bellin is in the solid black. Um, both Barry Michael and myself now have Paul Briggs in charge here in terms of point scoring through the first four rounds. The question is how long can Adrian Bellin take this punishment from Paul Briggs? Does have good power of his own Bellin with 11 knockouts from 15 wins. The edge in terms of that area in this fight appear to be with Paul Briggs. Work to the rib cage there from Bellin, finding a good angle there. Backing up Paul Briggs. He, re he really is fighting his heart out, Adrian Bellin. Oh, big uppercut there from Paul Briggs. Get him, get him, get him. Step back, don't punch, don't punch. Right back, right back, right back. Giving away height, weight, and reach, Adrian Bellin. We'll take our hat off in terms of his courage as he walks into another left hand. Oh, nice short right hand there from Paul Briggs. Get him, Briggs. given the experience oh. he has as a kickboxer as well, it's very difficult to find a way past the defences of Paul Briggs. No, his defence is exceptional. He, he he's, you know, uses his shoulders well, he sees punches well, his hands are held high and he, he punches from every angle. Even switch hitting there on cue. Switch hit on Very, very impressive. Oh, what an uppercut. Adrian Bella continues to take punishment here in round number five. Certainly the more solid and accurate shots are coming from Paul Briggs. Now he's, re he's really settled down, Paul Briggs. He's, put he's putting on a class display of boxing here against a very, very, you know, top quality opponent who's super fit and super determined in Adrian Bellin. Bellin continues to have success with the overhand right. That was the punch in the first round. It just caught the attention of Paul Briggs. Certainly the traffic going back the other way is a little more substantial. Adrian Bellin's right eye is, is going very black underneath, below where it's cut. Yes, it's starting to look very untidy indeed, and one wonders about the necessity for this fight to continue too much longer when you consider how Paul Briggs is unloading here on Adrian Bellin. Oh, he just hurt Briggs. I think, I would like to see that disclaimer, it looked like he dropped his, his knees bucket, he was, he was on the other side of the Bellin. He just landed a big combination, but as he pulled away, it looked as though he was caught with something. Well, Adrian Bell and certainly a warrior. Briggs in a southpaw stance now. Toward the end of round number five. Look at Adrian Bellin's face. My God, he's... Keep him up, Paul. Keep him up. Another end of round number five. Another clear round of Paul Briggs. 10-9. I'd like to see that in slow-mo. Maybe he just lost balance, but he, as he pulled away after throwing a combination, it looked as though he caught something or, or lost his balance. The doctor is getting a little closer to Adrian Bellin now. They want to have a look at the eye. Good. He's right. 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 He's right.
and three down and hit clear. Adrian, Adrian. He is one tough customer, Adrian Bellin. As round number six gets underway here from Fort Knox in Melbourne. Paul Briggs comes out of the red corner in the black with white piping. Adrian Bellin in big trouble here in terms of being marked around the right eye and bleeding from the nose as well. He trails by a couple of points, according to Barry Michael at ringside, former IBF Junior Lightweight Champion of the World. Paul Briggs starts round number six here in good style as well. Beautiful game. Big oh. body shot and doubling up there. Paul Briggs works to the head as well. We know Bellin has knockout power. The problem at the moment is keeping Paul Briggs at bay. Well, you know, he, he did land a big shot in the first round, and Briggs was hurt momentarily, but he recovered within, within a second or so. So it's going to be a hard job for Adrian to really, you know, he'd need to land three or four bombs, I would think, on, flush on target. At this stage, he's sort of methodically being picked apart by Briggs' uh, rather awesome arsenal. He's thrown those punches with bad intentions as well. Okay. Caution there from Jim Boland for holding the back of Bellin's head while shaking him up with right hands. Hitting with three uppercuts. I tell you, you've got to give Adrian Bellin credit. I don't think he's taken a backward step, has he? Not in this fight. And probably not in any of his previous 19 either. No. And the accuracy of punching power of Paul Briggs is certainly something to marvel at not for adrian bell and certainly for fox sports viewers around australia only live boxing action here from australia is right here on fox sports and that right eye of adrian bell is getting even worse i wouldn't be surprised if jim boland encourages the doctor to have another look at it yeah it can only go so far it's starting to close i mean it's going to close completely before long Big uppercut again from Briggs, and Bellin must be in trouble now. He has soaked up enormous punishment. Tell you what, he hasn't really battered an eyelid, though, against some of these shots he's taken. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. One for Adam. Okay, it was an accident. Okay, do it again with the score, boy. Okay, shake, just shake hands. Shake hands. Okay. Okay. Paul Briggs just telling Adrian Bellin that I can kick better than you. I'm a world kickboxing okay. champion. You may not want to go that route again. I bet you he would. <laughs> Well, I've seen Paul Briggs in action as a kickboxer, and if he was to kick Adrian Bell, and he might just actually kick him out of the ring. And Briggs is well on top here, concluding stages of round number six. Adrian Bell still in there with a puncher's chance because he has rocked Briggs in the first round and again in round number five. But outside of those two instances, Paul Briggs is making this all one-way traffic at the moment. Yeah, the doctor's going to have to have a good look at that eye. I'll tell you, it's not looking good. A very courageous, commendable performance by Adrian Berlin, but he's, he's being outgunned. No, good advice there from Paul Fifield, the trainer. I don't think there's any doubt. Well, he shows he cares for his fighter. But that's the right approach here. If Adrian Bellin can't produce anything here in round number seven, then yeah, have probably seen enough because his right eye continues to close. He's soaking up enormous punishment. And some of the uppercuts from Paul Briggs, well, that would scare 10 men. Yeah, you're not wrong. Fearsome stuff. Adrian Bellin, you know, very, very brave warrior. But uh, his corner man, Paul Fifield, very good call. Just don't want to see him get hurt as round number seven gets underway. It's 59-56 on the scorecard. For Barry Michael, I have 59-45 in favour of Paul Briggs. Just getting a little untidy here as well. Adrian Bellins, well, he's on the brink here of being disqualified for indiscretions. He's taken more hits than the internet, Adrian Bellin. And he's on the end of a right hand again. Tries to show that he's not... But Paul Briggs just has too much in his arsenal for Adrian Bell at the moment. He snaps back his head with the jab. Paul Briggs in awesome fashion here, digging to the rib cage. What a polished performance. Against a quality opponent, too. I mean, Paul Briggs has got a huge future. 
Briggs again digging away to the rib cage of Adrian Bellin. It was only 18 months ago that Adrian Bellin went 12 rounds with Tosca Petridis. Yeah, an absolute war it was too. It was early in the fight, it was Adrian's fight, but as the fight progressed, the experience sort of told, and uh, Tosca came out and pulled out with that 12th round KO up to, and it was a ripper of a fight. And in contrast, we saw Paul Briggs unhinge Tosca Petridis in one round a month ago. And that form line is standing up here between these two because Paul Briggs at the moment, well, he's picking Adrian Bellin off at will. I tell you, he's one of the most devastating body punchers or devastating all-round fighter, but he's a great body puncher that I've seen for a long, long time. His body shots really are vicious. Well, Craig Morty is of the opinion that Paul Briggs is the best prospect in Australia at the moment. Yeah, well... He's not too far away. I'd say so. He's certainly up there with him. Big body shots again from Briggs Bellin. Well, he just continues to come forward. I wonders about the merit in taking any more punishment here. Yeah, I think Paul Fifield will probably stick true to his word and uh, stop the fight at the end of this round. There are parallels here between this fight and the one against Moses Sarovi back in May this year. Sarovi himself a former Australian and Open BF Cruiserweight champion. And Paul Briggs took him apart over seven rounds, completely dominated the fight. And his work to the body was something to behold. Paul Briggs has been in against some big names in Australian boxing. And no one has really challenged him as yet. No, he's, he's certainly a class above them all at the moment. Again, switch hitting a little Briggs. Backing up Adrian Bellin with a left jab. Almost at will. End of round number seven. Except for Glenn Kelly, I should say. That would be a good fight, wouldn't it? Paul Firefield talking to Adrian Bell and we might be close to a stoppage here. Plenty of water, please. Plenty Mark of Bellum wants to continue. Plenty of water. Oh, oh. Plenty of water. Adrian? Plenty of water. Adrian. You good mate, mate. I'm going to get one more round, mate. You're getting unnecessarily beaten, mate, OK? OK. You understand? You understand? Yeah. You Okay, you could you be scoring them 10-8 rounds, couldn't you? Really, yeah, that one-sided now. Well, that's good refereeing from Jim Boland as well. Yeah. Rather than stop the fight or apply a standing eight count, he's made it clear to Adrian Bellant, as has Paul Firefield, his trainer. And unless there is some artillery coming back, then they're going to so pull this up because Paul Briggs is really just one way traffic. off on him. Yeah, one-way traffic. Another 10-9 round. And the round has come in from Paul Fifield. He's seen enough. And there the towel has come in. Adrian Bellin doesn't like the call. But there really was no reason for Adrian Bellin to take any more punishment. And Paul Briggs is the new Australian light heavyweight champion. Completely dominating Adrian Bellin over seven rounds. And the corner throws in the towel. And Paul Briggs becomes a father and Australian champion within two hours of each occurrence and joins his twin brother Nathan as a winner here on Big Time Boxing. Well, I had the fight 69-64. Bellin actually won the opening round, but then the subsequent six were all one-way traffic for Paul Briggs. I, can't, I kindly gave him a draw in the second. He really carried the fight up. But you could see the, the stamp on the fight towards the end of the second round. The Briggs was going to take control of it. From then on, he was, it was just, well, just one-way traffic, wasn't it? And actually, you could have even scored some of those rounds 10-8, I guess. Yes, he is quite a prospect, Paul Briggs. What a night it has been. He'll remember November the 24th for a long time. Former world kickboxing champion. Now the Australian light heavyweight champion. A father to boot, his twin brother Nathan winning on the same card. And Adrian Bellant was well, very brave in defeat, but there really was no need for it to continue any longer. And his trainer Paul Firefield did an excellent job to pull it up. He was taking unnecessary punishment and was in danger of being hurt seriously. He was cut above the right eye in the opening round, bleeding from the nose from the third round, and then lost his way a little bit and almost ended up kicking Paul Briggs in frustration in round number six. And Paul Briggs certainly is a man to contend with here in Australian boxing as we get the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning of round eight, referee Jim Bollard was advised the fight has been conceded and that the new Australian light heavyweight champion is Paul the Hurricane.
Well, good sportsmanship there from Paul Briggs as well as he raises the hand of Adrian Bell, and he was brave in defeat. He certainly was. He really, Ladies really did put up a very brave performance also. there. There's Brad Vicali to Bell. put the belt on the waist of Paul Briggs, the new Australian champion. Hard-working secretary of the ANBF, Brad Vicali, joining us in commentary as well. He does a tremendous job for Australian boxing, and so does this man, Paul Briggs. Well, he's now the Australian champion. And he certainly would be a worthy contender for Glenn Kelly. He what a match would. that would be. What a, what, that would be a great fight. Let's get a word with the new Australian champion, Paul Briggs. I'm sure he's pretty happy. Terry Hansen is right there with him. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can announce a double victory here tonight for Paul the Hurricane Briggs. Not only is he a new Australian champion, but just two hours ago, his wife, Tasha, delivered, weighing in at 8 pounds and 10 ounces, it's a boy! <laughs> Paul, this is the night you're going to remember for a long time. Uh, I'm just, um, this time, but before Tosca, I wasn't speechless, this time I am. I mean, I just, I just didn't have the sting tonight because um, I, I had a very emotional day and a, an emotional night um, on the phone to my wife. And um, it was just, it was so hard to prepare for um, mentally for this fight. But um, I, I want to say, I take my hat off to Adrian. He's a warrior and a gentleman. Um, when there's so many guys in this country that call themselves boxers and don't want to step up, i.e. Glenn Kelly, mate, you can learn something from this guy. He's a true warrior. Paul, well, obviously, your eyes on, are on an international career as big as your kickboxing career. How big of a stumbling block was this for you tonight to, to get to that first Australian title? Um, tonight was actually bigger than my, my world kickboxing title fight, which I won at 19 years old in Tokyo um, in front of about 26,000 people. So tonight was not only a harder fight, but it was also just um, so much bigger for me. I, I was just... I almost fell over when we got the phone call when Adrian said that he was going to fight us after knocking out Tosca in one round. I mean, I just were, wish there were more boxers in this country with the heart like this guy. Um, I'm, I'm looking at bigger and better things. I believe now I, I've, I've knocked out Moses Sarovi, Jamie Wallace, Jason Roussel, Tosca Pedridis, and now one of the hardest men that I've fought, Adrian Bellin. Um, I, I'm just ready to take on the world and I just want to thank the Australian public for supporting me because I just never got it when I was kickboxing and I think um, it's just awesome. So it's a very emotional night for me. Thank you very much. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, to Paul the Hurricane Briggs. Um, this is the last fight for me this year. I'm going to take a bit of a holiday, but there are some people who I do have to thank. Um, first off, I just want to thank Bill Morty and Craig Morty for believing in my talent and giving me the opportunity to show my talent. Um, I also want to thank my sponsors. Uh, Bones is a very good friend of mine, looks after me, thank you very much. Um, Sharon and Wayne from, from Show Off Clothing. Um, Peter from Windy. You better get to the hospital, mate. Uh, Richard Vell from the Boon Chew Restaurant and also uh, George Gover from GG Design. And thank you very much to people from Melbourne. You're, the, you're always awesome to fight in front of and I hope to come back again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll take the opportunity to have a few words with a man who took some incredible punishment tonight. I know John and the broadcast were comparing him as a terrier to, a terrier to Mike Tyson there tonight. Adrian, a uh, sensational performance, mate. Just finally the, the damage just had to pull you up. Yeah, um, a few things didn't go my way tonight, I mean, just couldn't get a few things going, but I mean, can't take any away from Paul Briggs, he fought a good fight, he's a very good fighter as you saw, you know, um, he's been very active, I wish him all the best, I mean, six, six weeks ago when I took the fight, um, I didn't think twice when I had it offered to me, I just said, yep, I want to do it, because I had a very inactive year. Um, I'd like to thank all the people that got behind me for it. Everybody helped out. Um, I'd like to thank my sponsors, Independent Cranes, 
um, Masashi for getting behind me as well, all the people at the Underworld Gym, all the guys I train with, Zoe, you're a legend. <laughs> um, yeah, what can I say? Um, I'd especially like to thank my girlfriend, Rochelle. Um, she was right behind me the whole way. I couldn't have done it without her. I mean, I made the light heavyweight. I did it easy. I'm the fittest I've ever been, thanks to Paul Fife. He got me in the best shape in my career. Um, but I guess it all matters on the night, and I just couldn't put it together. Mate, what we saw you doing, we absolutely love watching. Thank you very, very much for the sensational effort, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again on the big fights. Okay, I'd like to thank you all. Thank you. Well, Adrian Bell, and certainly a warrior. He's called the loads of Paul Briggs tonight, the new Australian light heavyweight champion. And as you see, he wants Paul Kelly. He's beaten Jamie Wallace. He's beaten Moses Sarovi. And so there isn't a lot that Paul Briggs has to do if he can beat Glenn Kelly. Well, certainly. Right now, in fact, he looks world class to me. It was one of the best performances we have seen, and it brings the curtain down on an entertaining night. Here from Knox, if you may have joined us a little late, we'll be back to wrap up proceedings in just a moment.